What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams, and today we keep on pushing through the silver age of the Walt Disney Animation Studios filmography with the classic 1951 Alice in Wonderland, starring the vocal talents of Catherine Beaumont. Ed Wynn, Sterling Holloway, Verna Felton, J. Pat O'Malley, Bill Thompson, Joseph Kearns, and Jerry Kalana. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And like I said during the introduction, today we're going to keep on going through the silver age of the Walt Disney Animation Studios filmography. And today we're going to talk about the classic 1951 movie, Alice in Wonderland. Those of you that have seen this film before, as I'm sure all of us have, we all know what a trippy tale this is. Lots of familiar voices, Sterling Holloway yet again, Verna Felton, J. Pat O'Malley, all back for another round in this film. Let's get into it here, shall we? Our movie opens in England, and young Alice is bored with her sister's history lesson on the Norman conquest of England. Alice expresses her desire for adventure and ends up wandering to the River Thames. Once there, Alice spots a white rabbit in a waistcoat who keeps exclaiming that he's late for a very important date. She chases him and follows him into a large hole and watches him leave through a tiny door. The talking doorknob advises her to drink from a bottle marked Drink Me, which will allow her to shrink to the appropriate size. She does and floats out of a keyhole into a sea of her own tears which she had cried after eating a biscuit marked Eat Me, which made her grow very large. As she continues to follow the white rabbit, she encounters an array of unusual characters, including the Tweedles, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, who recount to her the tale of the walrus and the carpenter. Alice follows the white rabbit to his house where he mistakes her for his housemaid, Marianne, and sends her to retrieve his gloves. Now, while looking for the gloves, Alice finds and eats another cookie marked Eat Me and grows large once again. As a result, she gets stuck in the house. The white rabbit, feeling that Alice is a monster, asks the dodo to help expel her. The dodo decides to burn the white rabbit's house down. But Alice escapes after eating a carrot from the white rabbit's garden, which causes her to shrink down to about three inches tall. Alice continues to follow the white rabbit, and Alice meets a garden of talking flowers, who at first welcome her with a song but then begin to make disparaging remarks about her appearance and order her to leave. Alice then encounters a caterpillar who gets upset when Alice laments her small size, which is the same as the caterpillars. The caterpillar then turns into a butterfly and flies away. But before he leaves, the caterpillar tells Alice to eat a piece of a mushroom in order to alter her size, as one side will make her grow taller and the other will make you grow shorter. Alice does, and she ends up returning to her original size and continues to chase the white rabbit. As she makes her way through the woods, Alice gets stuck at a point with multiple paths where she encounters the Cheshire Cat. Alice inquires which way she needs to go, and he tells her, well, that depends on where you want to go. 
Alice says, it doesn't matter. With the Cheshire cat grinning and exclaiming that it doesn't matter which way she goes then. The Cheshire cat points out that she should seek out the Mad Hatter and the March Hare if she wants to learn the whereabouts of the White Rabbit. So Alice tracks them down, along with the Dormouse, at the March Hare's house, celebrating their unbirthdays by having a mad tea party. The Mad Hatter and the March Hare ask Alice to explain her predicament to them, but Alice becomes frustrated at their constant interruptions and absurd logic. Alice gets fed up and prepares to leave when the White Rabbit appears and chaos ensues. Alice decides to return home, but then her surroundings completely change, causing her to get lost. Fearing that she may be lost forever, Alice sits on a rock and begins to cry. The Cheshire Cat then appears and advises Alice that she should seek out the Queen of Hearts and ask her for directions home. The Cheshire Cat shows Alice a shortcut to the castle of the King and Queen of Hearts. And the Queen orders that a trio of plain card gardeners be beheaded for accidentally planting white roses instead of red ones. The plain card trio even attempt to paint the roses red in order to gain her favor. The queen invites Alice to play a game of croquet with her, and Alice reluctantly agrees. Flamingos, card guards, and hedgehogs are all used as equipment, and they all try to rig the game in favor of the queen. The Cheshire Cat appears then once again and plays a trick on the queen, causing her to fall over. The Cheshire Cat disappears just in time to make it look like Alice was the prankster. The king is able to suggest a trial before the queen can order her execution. And during Alice's trial, the Mad Hatter, March Hare, and Dormouse are all called to the stand as witnesses. While they're on the stand, they celebrate the queen's unbirthday and give her a headpiece as a present. But the headpiece turns into the Cheshire Cat. When Alice points the cat out, chaos ensues as the frightened Dormouse runs around the courtroom. The Queen of Hearts orders the execution of Alice, but Alice eats a piece of the mushroom that she had saved from the caterpillar encounter and grows large once again. The king and queen order her to leave the courthouse, but she refuses and instead begins to insult the queen. As Alice dishes out her insults, she begins to return to her regular size. Once Alice returns to normal, the queen orders her execution. Alice flees and the queen, keen, card guards, and other characters begin to pursue her. Once Alice reaches the small door she encountered in the beginning, the doorknob shows her that she is actually outside asleep. Alice calls out to herself in an attempt to wake herself up, which she does, and then returns home. It was all a dream. All the madcap adventures, the chaos, the hashtag shenanigans, all a dream in Alice's mind. You know, I really enjoy Alice in Wonderland, and I enjoy this film so much that it's been very hard for me to watch any other telling of Alice in Wonderland. I have yet to see the live-action Disney version with Johnny Depp or any of the other versions that came out back in the day. I even have an alternate version up here in my library 
live action that came out in the mid 80s. Still never seen it because I love this version so much. The Psalms, you know, the unbirthday psalm, all in the golden afternoon, painting the roses red. Such good, some of them very simple songs, but still timeless and classic. And when you think of classic Disney songs, I definitely at least always think of the Unbirthday song and All in the Golden Afternoon. Those are two of the ones that I always think of from this era of Disney movies. The voice cast is phenomenal. You know, Catherine Beaumont, we'll hear from her again tomorrow as she shows up in Peter Pan as the voice of Wendy. Ed Wynn, such a classic character, actor, voice actor. So good, in fact, that when Alan Tudyk did King Candy for Wrecked Ralph, he very much was channeling Ed Wynn. So when you hear King Candy and Wrecked Ralph, it's designed to sound like Ed Wynn, like the Mad Hatter. Very, very purposely done. And just a little tip of the hat from Alan to Ed, somebody who I'm sure had a lot of inspiration on him. Sterling Holloway again, the Cheshire Cat in this film. You know, he keeps popping up. And the funny thing about Sterling Holloway is, is he never changes his voice. A lot of voice actors will do different voices for different characters. But if you listen, every single character he voices is the same. It's, it's just his regular voice that he uses. But... It just, something about his voice really brings those characters to life. Mr. Stork, Cheshire Cat, you know, Winnie the Pooh, Ka in the Jungle Book, the narrator for Peter and the Wolf, etc. It's just, his voice is so recognizable. That the moment he begins speaking, that's Sterling Holloway. When it comes to my rating of this film, you know, it, it should be no surprise that this one's going to get high ranks from me. I give it four and a half out of five stars. I think it's such a great telling of the story of Alice in Wonderland. The animation is perfect. The imagery is very trippy especially for the time that it was made. You got to figure like we, we hadn't really begun to enter the drug culture yet. And some of the imagery in this is just so far out there, definitely ahead of its time, but four and a half out of five stars for me when it comes to Alice in Wonderland, make sure you guys get out there on social media. Get those hashtags trending. Hashtag Casa D18 Studios. Hashtag Renegades Reviews. Hashtag Renegade Returns. And of course, the ever popular hashtag shenanigans. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor Jeff Meacham himself. You can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, as well as the red and gold Meachamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood. The Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade JJ Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Stat Boy Approved shirt. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network and score your shirts today. 
make sure you guys get out there. Do what that commercial just told you. Go to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the official merchandise of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood. Get you your Renegade J.J. Williams shirt. Dad's not always on wrestling. Stat Boy Sports Bar. Hashtag Stat Boy Approved. Hashtag Shenanigans. Get you your official merchandise for the Jeff Meacham Network. Three different designs of the Jeff Meacham Network logo for you to choose from, along with Talk Wrestling, Meacham Mania, and so much more. Get out there, support. And while you're supporting, do what that ticker is telling you to do. You want to help me acquire more movies to review? You enjoy my content? Go to that PayPal, send me a donation. Or go to that link tree, purchase something off my Amazon movie wish list. Keep in mind, guys, I'm not being monetized at this time. Still trying to get my viewership hours up so I can begin to monetize. So in the meantime, if you enjoy my content and you want to support me, go to that PayPal. However much you feel comfortable sending, send me a little donation. Let me know that you guys appreciate my hard work. Or go to that link tree. Get something off my Amazon wish list. If you do that, when it arrives and I do the movie mail segment on Renegade Recap, I'll give you a quick shout out. Thank you for purchasing whatever you may purchase. And then when I work it into one of my theme months and I get to actually watch and review the film that you purchase, I'll give you another shout out. Very simple. Give you the opportunity to be interactive. Help me with more movies to review and support. Tomorrow, right back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, when I will bring you yet another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. Make sure you tune in as we keep on going through the Silver Age of the Walt Disney Animation Studios films and we discuss from 1953 Peter Pan. Featuring the vocal talents of Bobby Driscoll, Catherine Beaumont, Paul Collins, Hans Conrad, Bill Thompson, June Foray, Tommy Lusk, and Heather Angel. You're not going to want to miss out tomorrow when I discuss the classic Walt Disney Animation Studios film, Peter Pan. As I said yesterday, man, the Silver Age era is definitely a bunch of the greatest hits at least before we get to the renaissance era you're hard pressed to find a film during this timeline that's inferior so make sure you're here tomorrow for peter pan to all my loyal viewers that have been watching the premiere leaving your comments over here thank you very much guys i greatly appreciate you all my loyal viewers that tune in later on in the day, watch on demand, leaving your comments down here. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate you. I appreciate each and every one of my loyal viewers that tune in on a regular basis. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.